This is Pastor Randy, and I'm glad you joined me today for my message in our Christmas Is series. Today's message is called Peace for the Troubled. Our primary scripture is from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7, and John 14, verse 27, and John 16, verse 33. From Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. From John chapter 14, verse 27, we read Jesus' words, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And from John 16, verse 33, I have told you these things, Jesus said, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. May the Lord bless us as we read his word. On the second Sunday of Advent, we light the second candle on our Advent wreath, the candle of peace. A dictionary might define peace as a state of assurance, a lack of fear, and sense of contentment. It is fellowship, harmony, and unity between individuals. Isn't that something we need in the world today? Peace in Ukraine, peace in the Middle East, peace in our divided nation, peace among our family and friends, peace in our troubled hearts. Many people, even during this time of year, maybe especially during this time of year, find it difficult to feel contentment at peace with themselves and with others. Maybe it's the unreasonable expectations we place on the holiday season. Maybe it's the fact that the holiday season seems to run a highlighter over the things we've lost, the loved ones who are absent from our lives but still live in our hearts. Maybe it's the friction that exists between us and those we still have with us or the friction between the expectation that we should be happy, but our health or relationships or circumstances may not be what we would hope they would be. Many of us are troubled, discontented, discouraged, and Jesus understands our hurts and how troubled we are. Perhaps that's why Jesus frequently told his disciples, peace be with you. And to those whom he healed, he often gave this charge, go in peace. Your faith has made you well, made you whole. Peace is obviously an important part of the work of God in in this world. The prophet Isaiah predicted that the Messiah would be known as the Prince of Peace. We saw that in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. The Apostle Paul lists peace as one of the seven fruits or natural signs and results of the Spirit of Christ in us in Galatians chapter 5. We talked about peace when I did a series on the fruits of the Spirit last year. Peace in the spiritual sense can be defined as that tranquility of heart which comes from knowing deep inside that our life and our situations are in the hands of our loving God. Do you have that peace? Do you know that God loves you and is working all things together for the good of those who love him? The Apostle Paul's most famous greeting to the churches he wrote to was, Grace to you and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. He used the words grace and peace together like salt and pepper or bread and butter. In his mind, they apparently just went together. And I can see the truth in that. For if we are recipients of God's grace, the natural result is that we will experience God's peace. Once we become convinced that God has forgiven us and have an inkling of how wide and deep and high his love is for us, then we can't help but have a sense of peaceful assurance that nothing else can truly harm us. As Paul wrote, if God be for us, who can be against us? Jesus said in John 14 and 16, peace I leave with you and my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. I have told you these things, he says in John 16, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Did you hear that? Jesus knows you are troubled. And it is Jesus' desire that you know peace, his peace. Well, how do we get this peace? Let me answer by asking, have you embraced the knowledge that God loves you and that Jesus died for your sins? Have you trusted in him as your savior or are you still at war with God? Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, you will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. So trust in him. But what if you can't seem to do that? What if you feel that God can't love you, can't forgive you, that you are at odds with God? Paul writes in Romans 5, 1 to 2, that Jesus gives us peace with God. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace, through, peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. John 3.17 says that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. If we're not at peace with God, the lack of a truce is on our side, not his. We're often to blame for our lack of peace. In Isaiah 48, verse 17 to 18, and verse 22, we read, This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the ways you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your righteousness like the waves of the sea. But there is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. So ask yourself, have I brought troubled, my troubled state upon myself by the way I've lived, by the choices I've made, by my sin? If so, know this, Isaiah 59, verse 1 to 2 proclaims that surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save you, nor his ear too dull to hear, but your iniquities have separated from your God, separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. The way of peace you do not know. There is no justice in your paths. You have turned them into crooked roads. No one walks, who walks in them will know peace. You see, the first prayer in troubled times needs to be that one confesses where we know we've gone wrong, where we've fallen short, where the chaos and the stress in our lives is our own fault, if that be the case. And 1 John 1, 9 says that if we do so, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He will wipe the slate clean and give us a fresh start. This is the work that Jesus accomplished for us. In Colossians 1, 19 to 20, Paul writes, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, in Jesus, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Jesus made peace for us. He is our peace. You know, there's an old saying that says, where there's no God, one has no peace. But when you know God, you will know peace. When we are right with God, we cannot help but be right with our fellow man or woman. We see others through the eyes of God. Our peace is an outgrowth of God's love in us. Jesus commanded us to love others as he has loved us and to forgive others as we have been forgiven. And when we love others as he has loved us and forgive others as he has forgiven us, we have a peace in our relationship with others. Well, I know it's hard to get along with other people. People can really irritate you. Even people you love, maybe especially people you love, and at work, no matter how good the pay is, a job may be unbearably, uh, may be simply unbearable to you simply because of the people you work with. It's hard to get along with other people, even at church. But Jesus wants us to be at peace and to experience unity among believers. He wants us to bring his peace to others. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. Jesus' peace isn't like anything in this world. 
No experience of life can ever take it from us, and no sorrow or danger, no suffering can ever make it less. Things will happen that we can't understand, but if we are sure of enough of God's love, we can be contented no matter what life throws at us, because God's peace does not pit, depend on our circumstances. As the old gospel song says, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. God will give you his peace. The fact is, Jesus is our peace. It's the fact that he lives in the heart of believers that gives them the ability to find peace in the midst of the trials of this life. If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have Christ in you, our hope and our peace. And as Paul says, one of the natural fruits of the Spirit of Christ being in you is peace. If you give him control of your life, Romans 8 to 6 tells us that the mind control of the, by the Spirit is life and peace. Give God control. Ask God to be in charge, and you'll have his peace. In Philippians 4, 7 and 9, the Apostle Paul tells us to pray, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And he says, the peace of God, will, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, he says, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I confess, sometimes I don't feel that peace. I let circumstances anger me or depress me. This peace doesn't come naturally to me, and it probably doesn't come naturally to you either. I have to work at it. Paul advised in Romans 14, verse 19, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Did you hear that? It takes effort. We need to work at peace, to do what it takes to be right with God and to build up one another in the body of Christ, not tear each other down. The Paul Point, point, uh, point that Paul is making is this, act out of love, don't tear down another's faith down, don't cause someone else to stumble. Finally, peace is not just something we feel, though, it's something we choose, and this is a choice we make through prayer. It's been said that peace is the fruit of believing prayer. Prayer is the conduit by which peace enters our life. In prayer, we are reminded that God loves us and wants what's best for us that God is wise and knows what's best for us, and that God is powerful and will do what's best for us. Let that soak in. God loves us and wants what's best for us. God is wise and knows what's best for us, and God is powerful and will do what's best for us. So we trust in God, and we find peace in that trust. Things will happen that we cannot understand, but peace comes from trusting in God, from knowing that we are God's own children, adopted by faith in Jesus Christ, joint heirs with him, and that God loves us and is faithful to us. We may have rough times now, but we know that they are temporary, and God will deliver us in the end. And our peace comes from knowing that the God who loves us knows what is best and is powerful enough to work what is best in our lives. Like the hope that we talked about last week, peace is something that God gives us. He pours it into us. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me remind you again that it's Jesus' desire that you find peace in him. He says in John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. A lot of us are troubled, like it was back in the time when Jesus first came into this world. In Isaiah chapter 9, we read, There will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the future, they, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. That's the world that Jesus came into, a land of gloom and darkness. We celebrate this Christmas because a couple thousand years ago, Jesus came to a dark and troubled world, and he brought light and peace, and he still does. Christ is peace for the troubled. So trust in God 
and ask God to fill you with his hope, his joy, and his peace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving the world so much that you sent your Son that we might not perish but have everlasting life, for sending him not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. So fill us with your Spirit that we will have the peace of knowing your love and mercy now and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and forever. Amen.